why do we get plaque in arteries but not in veins? This is a pretty common question. I see it in the comments on a regular basis and it turns out that there's quite a bit of science looking at this. So today we take a look at this question. The first thing to say is that plaque can show up in veins. It's just a lot less common. But it can happen specifically when veins get transplanted to arterial territory. I'm sure you've heard of a coronary bypass. So coronaries are the little arteries that supply blood to our heart muscle. And if they're blocked by atherosclerosis, by plaque, one way to address that is to use a vein. So surgeons take a vein from somewhere else, like the leg, for example, and they transplant it to the heart. So the vein is used as kind of like a detour to go around the blockage. And those veins can grow plaque. So this tells us that there's nothing fundamental about a vein that makes it impossible for plaque to grow. So it's less about arteries versus veins, and it's more about location. In fact, even in the arteries, plaque doesn't show up uniformly everywhere. It's in very specific areas, like bifurcations or curves, for example, arches in arteries. So one factor is blood pressure. Blood pressure is higher in arteries than in veins. And people who have high blood pressure, so-called hypertension, are at higher risk of heart disease. Now, people with normal blood pressure can still get heart disease. So hypertension is not necessary, but it raises risk more. Okay, so blood pressure is one factor, but it doesn't explain everything. It doesn't explain why in the same artery, we can see plaque in some regions and not in other regions that are pretty close. So another factor are the properties of the blood flow itself. In nerd speak, we call it rheological properties. Rheology is the science that studies the physics of fluid flow. If we have a straight tube, a liquid can flow inside very smoothly and regularly. This is called laminar flow. And that's what happens with blood in straight arterial segments. The liquid is acting uniformly on all parts of the wall. But when the vessel splits, there's a bifurcation, this smooth flow is disturbed. There's turbulence with the fluid hitting the wall in some areas, and this creates specific areas of susceptibility in the wall. And it's in these areas that we tend to see plaque growing. Scientists have done really crafty experiments looking at this. They looked at a straight artery where normally no plaque is formed, and they created a constriction. They didn't damage the artery, but they just pressed gently from the outside to reduce the diameter. That disturbs the laminar flow and plaque ended up developing in that artery. So this disturbance turned an artery that was resistant to atherosclerosis into an artery that was susceptible. Now these experiments are conducted in animal models, in lab animals, for pretty obvious reasons. Not a lot of people would volunteer to have their arteries messed with just to see if more plaque grows. So a little bit of caution since it's a different species and it's a model of the disease, but it suggests a possible mechanism that would align with everything else we see in humans. And scientists have gone even further in trying to figure out how exactly disturbing blood flow causes plaque. One idea was that this disturbance to the blood flow might damage the superficial layer of the artery wall that's in direct contact with the blood. And that damage might then allow more lipoproteins to get into the artery wall. If you're a regular viewer, you know all about lipoproteins, but if you're new, lipoproteins are these tiny little vehicles that carry lipids like cholesterol in our bloodstream. So this idea of the damage to the artery wall made total sense in principle, but experiments haven't really supported it. The evidence to date indicates that lipoproteins getting inside the artery wall isn't the limiting factor because they can get in and they can get back out. And in fact, many do. The key factor seems to be getting stuck inside the artery wall, what we call retention. When lipoproteins cross the endothelium, they reach a second layer called the intima, where they can stick to molecules called proteoglycans. And when they get stuck, they can get modified and trigger inflammation. And over time, these processes lead to plaque growth. So some studies have shown that disturbing the blood flow inside the artery increases the production of proteoglycans in the artery wall. So the idea is that this would make the wall stickier, 
so that when lipoproteins cross the endothelium and reach the intima, they're more likely to stick, more retention, more plaque growth. Okay, that's all really cool, but how does it affect our lives? Because we can't directly manipulate proteoglycan concentration or the composition of our intima. What we do know is that keeping our blood pressure, as well as these other risk factors, ApoB, glucose levels, inflammation, all of these things in the healthy range helps keep risk as low as possible. So those are the buttons we can push. Okay, last thing for today is a little workshop in critical thinking. I've heard people ask this on social media many times. Hey, we don't have plaque in veins. That means cholesterol has nothing to do with it, right? Because if it was about cholesterol, we should have plaque everywhere. Think about that for a second. By that logic, glucose is also not a factor. Because if I have high glucose in my blood, it's also high in my veins. In fact, that's where we get the blood to measure glucose and cholesterol from veins. And yet, veins, for the most part, don't accumulate plaque. Does that mean diabetes doesn't matter? It's not a risk factor? And we just let our glucose skyrocket? Of course not. It means that some areas are more susceptible. And if risk factors are present, then plaque can grow in those areas. If I plant a seed in the earth and I water it, I get a tree. If I put the same seed on a block of concrete or in the freezer, nothing happens. That doesn't mean the tree doesn't come from the seed just because it doesn't work everywhere indiscriminately. It means that a set of conditions is necessary for the seed to give rise to the tree. Same exact thing with black. It grows in susceptible regions and welcoming regions if conditions are present. No risk factors, no plaque. We covered a lot more on lipoproteins and atherosclerosis in this video. And this one covers a lot more about glucose and how to put diabetes in remission. Thanks for watching. Let me know your comments below. I'll see you next week. Bye.